Welcome back. Well, once again, I'm taking the rather unusual course of recording this intro after all the clips. And the reason for that is the intro as I originally did it don't, wouldn't really make total sense now. A little over a week ago, uh, my friend over at Action Retro put up a short video showing an installation of Mac OS 10 10.6 Snow Leopard on his PowerBook. Now, generally we would think this impossible since Snow Leopard was the first release that was Intel only. However, uh, it has been known that there were early builds in the development cycle that were universal meaning they would install on both the PowerPC and Intel platforms. Uh, some outstanding work, and there's a thread over at uh, Mac Rumors that you can check out, has got a couple of these early builds up and running. Well, now being aware of it, I had to absolutely try this. And I failed. It, I got it installed, it started to boot up, but kernel panicked. And I tried it again, and it kernel panicked. And I tried it again, you know, re, reinstalling it each time. Kernel panic. I tried it on different machines. Kernel panic. Well, I let it go, figuring, you know, just on too much time at it at that point. Well, just tonight, I had to try it again. Uh, I explained this, I think, in the last clip, but I re-downloaded it, restored the image, tried to boot it, and decided at that point, you know, these last couple of clips will show that. Well, I hope you enjoy this, because it is kind of an astonishing thing. So please stay tuned. Okay, here we are on the Leopard desktop on the Power Mac uh, Dual G5 in 2003, 1.8 GHz. Um, I have downloaded, here you see the PPC... SL for Snow Leopard 10A190. So this is an alpha build disk image. Now what this is supposed to be, and I'm sure it is, uh, is a an actual working basic install of Snow Leopard, not an installer, uh, which is good because you, you did have to run through certain tricks, I understand, to actually get the installer to install on a lot of power PCs. All right. Now, obviously, I am, I'm not going to install this <laughs> over Leopard or over anything else, really. But I do have, uh, you may remember that I put the one terabyte SSD in the machine. Uh, that these are the three partitions. I could put it on this data partition, but I'm not going to. Uh, rather, this data hard drive is actually uh, the larger of the two hard drives that came pre-installed. So, first thing we're going to do is go to Disk Utility. There we go. Now select it. And we're going to partition it. We're going to go to two partitions. And 
Yeah, 56. Let's be a little more generous than that. Yeah, we'll give it 61. And let's give this, you know, an inventive name. Snow Leopard hard disk drive. Yeah, I know. Aren't I creative? Uh, anyway. And then the remaining. We'll just make that a hard, hard disk drive. All right. And we shall apply. And partition. And here we see our new partitions mounted on the desktop, the Snow Leopard hard disk drive, and the data. Now, you could use disk utility, certainly, to create this. But rather, I, I'm going to have a try with Carbon Copy Cloner. If only because it's generally... No, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. At least it doesn't read it. Oh, restore from a disk image. Yeah, there we go. That's what we wanted. Okay. And it's got to mount the disk image, which perhaps I should have done. Oh, great. I don't know why it's struggling with this. All right, let's let's pause this and let it work its way through. And it really only took about another minute. I'm not 100% sure why it takes Carbon Copy Cloner so long to do that. Now, we're selecting Snow Leopard. Okay, yeah, you know, applications, users, yep. uh, system, everything appears to be there. We're just going to copy everything over. Uh, delete anything that doesn't exist on the source. Well, there's nothing on this partition. So let's clone. Now, this, I'm going to put the old password in. Uh, this is going to take a while I'll let you know how long it was but why don't we pause this here and the cloning has completed successfully uh, may not be able to see it and the zoom doesn't appear to be working I think it's this keyboard that have gone there but anyway the time elapsed 19 minutes 48 seconds that a copied 3.43 gigabytes all right. Now we can unmount the disk image. And let's see in system preferences, startup disk. And there we see it. At least it, it gives us the option. Well, let's find out. Yeah, the, uh, the chime is really loud, even though the sound when it comes on with the computer is not that loud. 
All right. We'll try it again. It's probably going to fail again. I'm going to have to do some research, see if I can figure out what's going wrong here. Yep. All right. Well, we'll be back. Well, I'm not holding out a lot of hope for this, but it does seem that some people on the Mac Rumors forum had difficulties using Carbon Copy Cloner for this. So let's try using disk utility. Okay, now this is gonna take a while, so I will be happy to bring you back when it's done. Well, okay, it's finished. Uh, Oops, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it didn't take substantially longer. One of the reasons why I've tended to use Carbon Copy Cloner instead of Disk Utility is Carbon Copy Cloner tends to be faster. It's also generally, it doesn't, it doesn't fail. Uh, of course, we don't know that this has succeeded, do we? Uh, we can close out a Disk Utility now. And just get a look at what's on it yeah I mean everything's there that you would expect to see in an OS installation so we're going to try it again already selected this we realize of course this is probably not going to work but you never know. the video. And same thing. Same thing. Okay, I begin to think this is probably not going to work. Uh, I may try installing it on a different computer, but, you know, it was worth a try. You know, I'll hang on to this and we will see if I can come up with something else. All right, I re-downloaded the disk image and did the restore in Disk Utility again. And we see here in the Startup Disk menu, it says it's an option. So we'll give it one more try. And here we go. It's probably not going to work.
Hope Springs Eternal, I guess. Alright, there's our spinning wheel. Now, this is about where it usually kernel panics, so it's going to kernel panic. I came close to giving this up, and I, I don't give up on things, because, uh, I mean, you saw the kernel panic, and it kept kernel panicking, and I tried it on other machines, uh, and it kernel panicked, but I finally decided to give it one more try, and I don't know, the time before, I had downloaded the DMG on my Mac Pro, and then copied it over to the Power Mac. Now, maybe there was something about that initial download. I mean, it wasn't the Mac Pro, but something about it. Maybe the process of copying it. I don't know. But yeah, I, I put it aside, and it's been almost a week since I initially tried to do this. And by God, it's worked. Okay, um, now I I've got to get you closer here. Just look at this Mac OS 10 version 10.0. Six on dual 1.8 gigahertz power PC G5. It is possible now. Okay, th this is I, I think it's hardly even a beta, I think it's more like an alpha version. But it, it booted up on a power PC. So, I mean, I'm going to spend some time with it and just try to see what's going on with it. But, you know, it is just so cool to see this. If, even if it's not really uh, usable, it is just so very cool to have one, one more operating system for these grand old machines. Well, thank you once again to Action Retro. It finally did work, man. Thank you so much. And to all of the people who worked so hard to find these builds and get them running. In any event, be good to other people. Be good to yourselves. Take good and careful care, and maybe drink a toast to this tonight. We'll be seeing you very, very, very soon.